Well, folks, the day has finally arrived. Trump's getting indicted. The special <laughs> edition of The Breakdown starts now. Good evening and welcome to the special indictment edition of The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson and goodness gracious. Rick. Happy, you, happy indictment day for those who celebrate. Listen, you and I have spent many, many hours together on the air. And if you would have asked us in 2020, August of 2020, if we would ever actually be sitting here saying that Donald Trump right. is going to be arrested and indicted the first former president in history, um, I think we probably would have been like, it's never happening. It's never happening. He's going to go away. We're going to beat him. It's never happening. Well, folks, right. mark your calendars. March 30th, 2023. Donald Trump has made history again for all the wrong reasons. Uh, right. Here we are. And Rick, I've got to tell you that I, I am, you know, as we saw this coming down, we weren't the only ones today that were like, wait, what? Because we just heard that the that the grand jury was going on hiatus for 30 days and that they were going to hear a couple other cases, but they were going to go on hiatus for 30 days, right. a regular scheduled break for Easter and spring break in April. And um, reports are tonight that it caught Donald Trump off guard too today. Uh, set the scene for me right now in Mar-a-Lago, Rick Wilson, since you're the anthropologist of Trump. Uh, Donald right now is trying to do two things. Part of his brain is trying to say... Um, how do I make money off of this? And as you've already seen, folks, most likely they're pumping out fundraising emails for the indictment defense fund, mm -hmm. just like the election defense fund that, that Donald Trump notoriously raised uh, like a hundred million dollars for and did not somehow ever defend his election. Um, right. So he's looking how to maximize this right now. Oh, hello, Tiki. It's so important. Tiki has decided to make an Tiki's appearance. Tiki's coming to town. To he is. Continue. I don't know where my cat is. She's wandering. <laughs> He's um, very interested. Yeah. But um, so they're trying to maximize this financially. They're trying to maximize it politically. And yet there's also something that I think it's important that, that Trump got tonight, handed to him on a plate, and it's that the Republican Party did what they always do. They defended this from top to bottom. I haven't seen anybody yet come out and say, fuck you, Donald, you're on your own. Maybe well, Chris Christie will do that later. Maybe. maybe Mitt Romney will, but not yet. Not yet. And the only one who's come out and kind of said, like, this is a sad day, um, but let the let the you know system work was Asa Hutchinson. And that's because he thinks that he's got some chance of potentially uh, running for president at some point. God bless him. But, you know, we appreciated Asa, but you are no longer relevant now. You're not even a governor anymore. Like, yeah, thanks, no, but that's okay. not how it works anymore. No, no. Look, but you, but you know who has come out? But as to your point, it's been very interesting. Right out of the gate, we had Mitch, uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy, of course. Yep. Uh, because he wears his knee pads all the time in case he's got to get on them for Trump. So that oh, happened yeah. already today. And Ron DeSantis came out with this statement that has really blown up. People are, we've been watching the, you know, the legal analysts and people are saying, really, Ron, you're doing this now? I think we have a copy of it. We because, do. you know, he's in Florida. He's the governor. Trump's in Florida. He's a Florida resident. Ron's the governor. He comes out and says, the weaponization of the legal system to advance a political agenda turns the rule of law on its head. It is un-American. The Soros-backed Manhattan district attorney has consistently bent the law to downgrade felonies and to excuse criminal misconduct. Yet, now he's stretching the law to target a political opponent. Florida, here's the key. Florida will not assist in an extradition request given the questionable circumstances at issue with the Soros-backed Manhattan prosecutor and his political agenda. Ron, <laughs> let me just say this, brother. You've already fucked the dog, as they say down south. And I know you, you're spiritually not from the south, Ron, even though you're born here. Um, you have screwed the proverbial pooch. You gave away the game. You came out tonight and you issued a statement that showed either you will bow to Trump, and we know you will, because we know you're not really that strong of a person. We know how much trouble your campaign's been having. We know how much chaos is going on in your campaign. We know how Jeff Rowe, your new consultant, is trying to fire Phil Cox. 
and Nancy Watkins and everybody else in your campaign. Because <laughs> your campaign started leaking, Ron. It was very tight for a long time, but now it's leaking and we're hearing things. Now, I want to say this very clearly. That tweet showed you that this is a man who is not the cleaned up version of Trump the light version of Trump, the okay sort of acceptable MAGA version, you know, who isn't completely insane. No, what it showed you is a guy who came right out and said, fuck the rule of law, fuck you to the justice system, and I can declare unilaterally on my opinion, on my feels, that Donald Trump doesn't have to face any sort of, of, of accountability here because the fact of the matter is, DeSantis showed you tonight, all, all you National Review boys, all you all you donor types who are like, Ron's so much better. He's a good guy. He's the kind of Republican we should all get by. No, what he showed you is two things. He's a chicken shit coward who's still scared to death of Donald fucking Trump. And he's also a guy who is contemptuous of one of the most fundamental conservative values, and that is respect for the rule of law. He has no proof or evidence aside from repeating the same anti-Semitic and anti and, and racist tropes right. about Boros and, and Alvin Bragg that Donald Trump and the rest of the crazies are doing. So DeSantis tonight got w the worst of both worlds. You know, is this like the worst week ever, except for Trump obviously getting indicted, but Ron DeSantis got punked by Mickey Mouse and Disney this week in spectacular fashion. I'd um, like to dedicate this show to <laughs> King Charles III. May his line live for a thousand years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the, earlier this week, we, we saw the reports about that because you know how, how Ron DeSantis decided to, because he's such a lover of free market capitalism. Um, no, oh, yeah. he's not by this retro political retribution against Disney and and setting up this board and dissolving Reedy Creek, the whole special district thing. Well, Disney punked him and they made they set in place a 30 year agreement before this new Ron DeSantis appointed board took over that basically renders it impotent so that the new the new folks can't do anything right. really to change the operating agreement that uh, that Disney is under. Correct. So just before we came on the air, I was talking to our friend Sarah Rumpf. Yeah. Uh, about the indictment, but also about Reedy Creek. Now, Sarah, folks, if you don't know, is from Orlando. She's an attorney. She's studied the Reedy Creek DeSantis fight closer than almost anybody else. And she said to me, she goes, I've been talking to lawyers all day. This thing <laughs> is solid. And if Disney uh, gets sued by DeSantis and the, and the new Reedy Creek board, everything everywhere all at once is how these lawsuits have to work. They have to put everything in there, every challenge. <laughs> And Disney gets to examine every single thing that went into all their statements, including wow. the things like Bridget Ziegler, the wife of, or the woman on the board is the wife of the Florida party chair, saying things like, we're going to control these groomer pedos and control their content. Okay. Yeah, good luck with that. For you. Yeah, good luck with that. Good luck. Uh, but, so, but, but back to Trump. Yeah. This, this, is, this is, you know, we're now hearing it's 34 charges. Right. But I, I have mean, something to God give some bless perspective. America. Well, here's some perspective on that. So some of the my, our, our legal friends have said that, yes, it may be 34 indictments and that's uh, 34 charges. Right. And that sounds like a lot. But the example that I heard used was if you steal an ATM card, then that's grand larceny and they'll charge you for that. But then right. they'll charge you for every single time you use it. So it doesn't just because it's a lot of them doesn't necessarily mean it's an order of magnitude. It could, but not okay. necessarily. Yeah, no, so it could be sense. for like everything. But re Look, regardless, I, though, most people do not pay attention to that. And you're going to have the reaction that you just right. had and the reaction I had initially when I heard it and said, holy shit, 34 charges. Um, and that is really what matters is that, you know, there were, people are going to see this and go, this is not just one or two little things. This is a big effing deal, to quote our current president. Joe Biden, the legally elected president. The Joe legally Biden. elected, duly elected, non-indicted president yes. who will not have a mugshot or fingerprints. <laughs> so um, another thing about that for people who are wondering, because I know people want to see the the mugshot, right? Well, New York state law, we're probably never going to see the, the mugshot unless somebody leaks it. There's always the possibility. That would be a shame and very, very wrong to do, courthouse <laughs> personnel. Definitely do not, absolutely don't leak that photograph. That would be wrong. <laughs> Is it worth, I know, right? Is it like worth your career? Is it worth your government pension to do it? I don't know. I don't know, maybe, but no. So that's so, I, I just wanted to put that out there because I know people have been wondering. And um, But I'm sure there will be plenty of folks 
perhaps some folks we know at Lincoln Project that might give us an idea of what that mugshot might look like <laughs> when the time <laughs> comes. So um, stay tuned for that. But you know what, Rick? Here's the other thing, too, that as I was watching this unfold today and just watching the Republican Party's reaction to this, this split we're seeing between the way the House and House leadership is reacting and the right. relative silence coming out of Senate leaderships. I mean, Senate leadership, McConnell hasn't said a word. Thune well, hasn't said a word Mitchell because they are so it. ready yeah. to be rid of Trump that they're sitting back and they're thinking about, OK, how do we say something? I, I bet you they're going to come out and have a rule of law, very even handed uh, statement when they when they do it. They're going to let McCarthy and the other clown show idiots in the in the House, Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and right. all the rest of those jerk offs. So, you know, back Trump and defend him and look like hypocrites about, you know, the rule of law. OK. And then I think they're, you're going to see a very different tone coming out of the Senate. Now, the Senate, they're no heroes either. Let's just be honest here. They had the right. opportunity to indict this bastard and that I mean, to impeach him and remove him, which we would never be worried about him running for office again because he wouldn't have been able to. But they chose not to. They took the easy way out by using a process argument, saying, well, he was out of office. There was no need to, uh, to impeach again. Blah, blah, blah. No, they could have been done with this, but they didn't. So no profiles of courage over there, except for like no. Mitt Romney. Well, I, I want to say this also, folks. And I, I mean, I am delighted from a broad historical perspective that what we're seeing right now is despite the rule, the, the Trump administration, the Trump administration in exile, mm. the House... And many members of the Senate and almost all the Republican media apparatus in the country for seven years now, <laughs> denigrating the rule of law, claiming it doesn't apply to Trump, finding loopholes, exceptions, codicils, various little escape hatches that tonight, for the first time, a message has been clearly sent that even a former president is not above the law. And even a president who conducted these activities, which he did, by the way, while he was president, is not above the law. You know, Richard Nixon was driven from office, but not perp walk, printed, indicted, all those things. This is a different category. We have seen something leveling up here. But I also, Tara, want to put something into the mix for everybody who's watching. And I want to, I want to say this very uh, flatly. This means Trump is the nominee. Yeah. Okay. The party is going to rally around him. Don't buy into the conventional wisdom that, oh, an indictment will be terrible for Trump. Tara and I were out at some meetings on the West Coast until yes. this morning. We this both morning. <laughs> red-eyed back to, to, the, to, the, to the, the rest of the world overnight. Yes. Yes. Um, and there were a lot of people who very smart folks who thought, oh, well, the indictments will end it, right? The indictments are going to make it all better, right? And our, our 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 briefing to them over and over again was, why would you think that? Why, why would you think that? You know, as Tara, you know, when they invade, when they when they raided Mar-a-Lago, Trump's polling went up. And guess what? Since this whole indictment talk and how right. this is ratcheted up, Donald Trump, according to a Fox News poll, we were right. citing the morning consult poll, which came out last week, that had a trend line from January to now. Now, if you don't believe us, you don't believe Morning Consult. Well, the Fox right. News poll came out and showed Trump up thirty right. points and, and the Fox News over DeSantis. Thirty and I'm points. I'm sure Rupert. I'm sure Rupert was like squeezing out a prune with anger on that one. Right. He <laughs> clearly has had his thumb on the scale for Little Ron. They've been trying. Um, They've been trying. And in fairness to the Fox polling yeah. apparatus, they're actually pretty decent. They actually as are a, considering like a legit, legitimate poll. Right. Uh, um, in fact, I think we have that, don't we? Um, we may have the the, the Fox poll. We no, we have the, the we have the show. ones from the from the morning. Yeah, why don't we pop that up? Just in, yeah. And folks, it's only gotten better for Trump since then. That's right. DeSantis has gone down. Trump has gone up, and the rest of the folks are cat and dog bullshit. That's right. And, and I, you know, I, t today I was talking with a pollster online. We were having a little bit of a a, a, a brouhaha, and I made it clear, you know, we don't we're not we're not slapping DeSantis around and Nikki Haley around because we hate them. We are slapping them around because we want to make the Republican primary as bloody and nasty and ugly and brutal and loud as possible. Why are we doing that? We're doing that because we believe in our gut and our hearts and our brains. We know it. We've watched the numbers. We've got experience 
that Donald Trump will, will seize the nomination at the end of this. He will take the nomination. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Ron DeSantis, overpriced stock. All these other people, bullshit. They're just noise. We want them, though, between now and then, to fight like wild animals. Mm -hmm. We want to expand the pool of voters the Lincoln Project can talk to and the, the pool of voters the Lincoln Project can, can do persuasion with in 2024 from our Bannon line number of 7 to 11 percent even wider. We want to make it so difficult for Republican voters to accept that that the battle they just had to try to get DeSantis or try to get Nikki or try to get Mike Pence, I mean, I guess those family members, um, <laughs> will will be so brutal and so jarring and so ugly that they either make a decision that they're going to stay with, they're going to make the choice of America or Trump. Yeah, they're going to again. Again, Again, and and we that's that that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we are so committed to this fight because it is once again going to be a choice about Trump or America. And Rick, you know, I have been saying this for quite some time now, but even more so that Trumpism is incongruent with democracy. Yes, Donald Trump and the MAGA that's movement. Putting it mildly, I think. Yeah, well, uh, Donald Trump and the MAGA movement. They hate what makes America great. Oh, yeah. This nonsense about <clears throat> make America great again. They oh, hate a, what makes America lie. great. And this is this is they demonstrate this every single day. And every yeah. time Donald Trump says something about um, you know, whining and, and and complaining about our judicial system, about his grievances, about the diversity in this country, about, Whoa. you know, all, all, these are all part, this is part of the democracy. This is part of the constitutional republic, our founding fathers that they claim to revere, put in place. So if you don't like that, Trump, then go try and be president of some other country, like, I don't know, maybe Russia or North Korea, since you're in love with them so much and they claim to love you so much. Go yeah, the hell yeah. over there where that kind of shit actually works. Not when when when, when, uh, when when Pudgy Sean Hannity the other night asked him, he said, Mr. President, don't you get along with so many foreign leaders? And no, Trump he asked he asked him. He asked him. Yeah. And, Kim, and it's like uh, as somebody tweeted. What? Do you not know any of the leaders of the free world? Right. No, what he asked him was give a short a phrase about each one of these these leaders. And what he oh, said God. was when he, he said Putin, he goes, I got along with them very well. And then he said, she, arousing. Right. Is his <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I think he's in a thruple with she <laughs> and, <laughs> and Kim Jong-un. So <laughs> Uh, but any, ugh, gross. But no, but seriously, like that would be disqualifying for any other like a, a candidate, major candidate that would be disqualifying those types of answers. But for Donald Trump, that's, you know, we're on, we're living on Earth three. Um, speaking of that earlier, Rick, you were saying how in history this has never happened before. Right. And, and how it shows, though, that no one is above the law in the United States. And someone ha would, would take issue with that. Um, historical reference, Rick Wilson. And mm -hmm. and it's someone who goes by the name of Donald Trump Jr. He has a difference of opinion Coakley, with you. Coakley Failson? <laughs> I think we have the video. Soros to back Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg is actually indicting my father. So let's be clear, folks. This is like communist level shit. This is stuff that would make Mao Stalin, Pol Pot, it would make them blush. Yeah, he doesn't know who any of those people are, first of all. You know, He's his, reading. His, his, as I tweeted earlier, his knowledge of history is as full of holes as his septum. <laughs> this guy, this guy, I mean, I do love the flop sweat. Uh, that he's displaying. I like the teary eyes, the the the, the dilated pupils, the heavy breathing. Yeah. And, you know, I had this vision, like I, I watched that video the first time I was in the car and I stopped and I watched it again and I started laughing. And all I could think of was him yelling like, Kim, you call Skeeter. You tell him I need a goddamn eight ball right now. <laughs> Make it a double. <laughs> right. Uh... Skeeter, by the way, folks, just to give you a little Florida man thing, that's um, any independent pharmaceutical distributor in the state of Florida, if you take my meaning. Oh my God. Well, you know, once no again, Skeeter on your not Skeeter. Good Lord. Um, so <laughs> as you know, obviously that we're doing this live and it, things are, are happening at a rather rapid pace with who's responding to what and, and everyone's trying to get their bearings in this. Um, Trump put out an, an insane statement 
Shocker. Oh no, and, really? Yeah. And he put something out and he misspelled indicted in his statement. Here we go. These thugs and radical left monsters have just indicated the 45th president of the United States of America. Yes, he's been indicated. And the leading Republican candidate by far for the 24 nomination for president. This is an attack on our country, the likes of which has never been seen before. It is likewise a continuing attack on our once free and fair elections. The USA is now a third world nation, a nation in serious decline. So sad. You know, so on brand. I mean, so it, on brand. It's so like classic Donny Caps lock. <laughs> this guy right. Is just we can't, I mean, this guy is just, I can't. But you know, this something else just from a practical perspective, like we're making fun of some of this, but this is actually really very serious. It and it is now in the criminal justice system. This is the law. This is, it's a state, it's state level, not federal yet. Let's not forget, there are still three more very serious cases out there mm -hmm. right now. Um, one, another at the state level down in Georgia with the fake elector scheme. And then you've got Jack Smith over there at the DOJ, who still, to me, seems like a badass. I don't think he's taken any prisoners. We see there's been a lot of movement on that, compelling people like Pence and Mark Meadows and others. The, the, the uh, Evan Corcoran, Trump's lawyer, they are being co compelled by a judge to testify now. Um this is very serious stuff. Yeah. And, you know, the idea that Donald Trump is going to go out there with his stubby little fingers and constantly whine and bitch and complain and try to uh, prosecute his case in public, that's a bad look for him because every single thing he tweets and puts out in public can be right. used against him in a court of law. So um, no, no, I don't want to be, I, right. I, I all you need to do is watch one episode of Law is and Order. Is even alive? Is he still alive? I don't know. He has to be like 100. Like he had to be like 100. <laughs> <laughs> I love these so much. The deep fakes, oh, man. The deep fakes. There's so, so much the, potential. The deep fakes are coming. They but are. Look, I know, Tara, you've got a pretty hard out coming up. You've got to be on TV in six minutes. Well, that's okay. I but mean, uh, we can we can finish out the hour at nine. I know that there are people who, are, and we're so grateful for everyone who's tuned in tonight. We were right. not, I, I just have we to were not scheduled. You guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, our chief of staff, Ryan Wiggins, just said in the chat, we know those pictures aren't real because Trump can't run. Right. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Unless I guess it's to a uh, a well done steak with ketchup, which I'm sure is all over the all right. over the the walls of Mar-a-Lago today. Um, but we just wanted to thank everyone for for uh, signing in and joining us tonight. Yeah, like I said, we weren't scheduled to do a breakdown, but obviously it, this is a historic day. It was too important for us not That's to, right. and we scurried on air. And uh, I'll be on ABC uh, News on Nightline later talking about that, which is where I'll be going uh, to tape real quick after this. But um, in in as we wrap this up, Rick, I just think that we need to put some things in perspective. Yep. And prepare people for what's about to happen. I don't think that our federal justice system, our criminal justice system at the state level has ever been challenged the way it's about to be with That's all right. of the norm busting that Trump is going to engage in like we're about to see. That's but right. I, but I feel confident that it will it will stand up to it because although our criminal justice system is flawed, it is still the best system in the world. And there are layers upon layers of people, good professionals from law enforcement to the judges to the, 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 the bailiffs in the courthouse that I think will take, will understand the gravity of this moment, right. and be professional and handle this. Uh, I can't say that, that much about what Trump's side is going to do, but I feel very confident that um, New York City of all places, which I cannot believe this is going to be where the first indictment comes. The irony of it all is just incredible. Uh, right. Given all of the shit that Donald Trump has done that he should have been indicted for and, and jailed. <laughs> but you know, Tara, you're, you're, you're right they're about gonna, the They're going to handle this well. You're right about the seriousness of this. And you're right about the, the degree to which this has, um, you know, enormous implications for the future of the country. Um, I, I and you know we still believe very firmly that this actually helps Trump with the Republican base, and that says a lot more about the Republican base and how broken away they have become from America, how separate they are from America, and 
I think as we watch these cases evolve and, and unfold in the next few weeks, it's important to never forget that the Republicans have shown you who they are. They will defend every crime. It doesn't matter. They will come up with every excuse in the book to, to find a way to claim this is something illegitimate, to claim this is something that is, is somehow driven by George Soros and the secret Jews and the blacks, black DAs and all the animals. All that coded language isn't mm-hmm. so coded anymore. Right. I was going to say, it's not so coded anymore. It's pretty All those dog whistles are now air raid sirens for That's his That's right. Case. That's right. I, I, I am concerned and I hope that, I, and I, I, it seems to me, I don't know for sure, but it seems to me federal law enforcement is ramping up to make sure that there's not going to be a repeat of a 1-6. I can tell you exactly what's happening with that. It was reported earlier tonight, right before we came on air, that there was an all all hands on deck uh, announcement set out to every single New York City police officer from right. the beat cop to lieutenants and captains to show up in uniform as of 7 a.m. tomorrow so that, you know, January 6th at the Capitol does not happen to happen in New York City. Got now there's no we haven't heard any reports that that could happen. We don't know. There's nothing specific about that, but they are prepared. New York City has the largest police force in the country. I think it's something like 38,000 cops or something like that. Um compared to 800 capital police officers in Washington. New York City is ain't DC, okay? Yeah. So they are prepared for anything if there's any shenanigans and we're praying God please that there won't be. Right. Um but <laughs> Don't fuck with New York City. <laughs> well, and and again, folks, the indictments are deserved and they're important, but they're not going to change where Trump is in the political ecosystem of the Republican Party. He is still going to almost certainly be the nominee. He is still going to move forward and 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 run for president, even if he's indicted. None of these cases, except perhaps Jack Smith, um, are going to actually come to fruition. Uh, by the time the election comes around. Yep. So with that, I know we got to go. And I think we have no one worries. more clip to show, don't we? Yes, we do. On on that Uh-oh. note, oh, Donald. Uh-oh. Just gotten word, <gasps> former President Donald Trump has been indicted hmm. by a grand jury in New York. Uh-oh. The decision to move and seek and get an indictment of a former president is the first time that has been done in U.S. history. Uh-oh. It would also mean that Donald Trump would be asked to surrender and face arraignment on charges yet to be announced. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right, folks. Uh-oh. Stay tuned. There's going to be more. Hopefully this isn't the only indictment. Hopefully there's a few more down the road. And we'll be here to talk about it, of course, on The Breakdown. Thanks, guys. I think we're, uh, is it next Thursday? It is next Thursday. We will be back. We'll see you all then. At 7. And yes, I got a couple of questions. This is my office. Oh. Yeah, so there very you go. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right. See you guys on Thursday.